Hello and welcome. This is Corey from the Bach Scholar YouTube channel and the Well-Rounded Pianist. Thank you for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to be going over Complete Guide to Major and Minor Scales, Volume 1, in my recently published book here, and I will explain how piano teachers and students can use this book in their studios uh, to help them learn the major and minor scales. So uh, before I talk a little about this book, I'm just going to demonstrate one page. And I'm going to play, I just chose this uh, scale here, F sharp minor in the melodic form. So F sharp melodic minor, and I am going to play it in five different ways. And all the scales in this book, the major and minor scales are presented in this fashion. And then I will explain why this is important and how teachers and students can use this book uh, in their studios. So let me play this here, this page. I'm gonna play really slowly, F sharp, melodic minor, in these five different ways. repeat each one two times. That's the first advice I would give you in learning scales is repeat them at least two and you could even do three or four times. Don't just play it one time but do at least two times. Now here's the second way. the fourth way <clears throat> and here is the uh, the fifth and final way Most students, most uh, beginning piano students up to about grade four, seldom learn the scales in this fashion. And what I've done is I've systematized the learning of all 24 major and minor scales, and I've, I have the instructions on the Well-Rounded Pianist. And you don't even need to pay to become a member of the Well-Rounded Pianist. You just go to wellroundedpianist.com and you click on uh, the Bach Scholar, no, actually, it, it, the Well-Rounded Pianist Piano Method, sorry. You click on the Well-Rounded Pianist Piano Method, and then that will take you to, you'll see a, a menu there, and you click on Volume 1, and then you click on, on the, uh, the uh, you'll, you'll see weekly lesson plans. It usually goes up to 12 weeks. Most of these lesson plans last 12 weeks. So grades one to four, grades one to four is volume one, and then grades five, six, seven is volume two, and then volumes eight and above are in volume three. So this volume, volume one, is for just total beginners and also intermediate level uh, pianists who would like to get back into learning scales from in a systematic fashion. So what you do is you simply get this book either in PDF or hard copy. And this book is presented very, very clearly. It's the text is really easy to read and it has cross references on the top here. For example, in this F sharp minor, it lists here on the top the relative major and it, it has all three forms of the minor scale here, one octave with all the fingerings. Every 
single note has a finger uh, indicated on it. And then here on this other page, F sharp melodic minor page, you have a listing of, of course, the relative major again, and also the sixth and seventh degrees and it lists the, the degrees that need, the notes that need to be sharp going up or flat going down. And at the top here, it lists the number of sharps or the number of flats in each of the scale. So it's a very easy to follow. And also each line has a number and a letter. So what I was just playing from is 24A through 24E, 24A, B, C, D, E. So all the pages are organized in this fashion, and then these numbers are used for the weekly lesson plans. So you'll, you'll look at the weekly lesson plan uh, for whatever week you're on, and you'll just follow the directions. You, most of them are just one paragraph long. They're really easy to follow, and you just follow along with this book as the teacher or student. Now, let's talk about these five ways that I just played that F sharp melodic minor scale. Well, the first way is in parallel motion or in similar motion, as it's sometimes called also. This is when you play the same note in both hands and you're going in a parallel fashion. That's usually the way that everyone learns scales but you, you shouldn't discount all the other ways because all the other ways is going to give you a lot more theoretical training and it will help tremendously in your ability to sight read and read new music. So the second way goes like this. That's what we call contrary motion going up with one hand and going down with the other, and then going vice versa, going down with the other and then up with the other. So it's going out and then it's going back in. The reason why I chose melodic minor is because if you know your music theory and you know your melodic minor scales, you know that melodic minor is different, a little bit different going up than going down. So this is um, one of the Difficult things for piano students is the ability to, to think with your, sort of your brain has to split into two. And by practicing melodic minor, particularly melodic minor scales in contrary motion, you really learn your scales well. I have a saying, you don't really know your scales, you don't really know your major and minor scales until you can play all of the melodic minor scales in contrary motion. And there are far too many piano students these days who cannot even come close to that. So this is very important that you're able to do melodic minor also. Don't ignore the melodic minor scales. Now the third way is like this. That's what we call in parallel thirds. So we're playing very close together. The left hand is playing the F sharp minor scale starting on F sharp. And the right hand starts on the third above. So it says in here harmonized above in thirds. So this way the student learns a little music theory along the way because if, if you know uh, J.S. Bach and Bach's fugues or his inventions or his symphonias or any of his polyphonic music, which is most of his music, uh, you probably have heard this before. You've, you've heard parallel thirds, but you really haven't really learned those. You haven't really learned those in a system yet. So this system teaches you that. And then the fourth way is this. So this is basically just taking the thirds and flipping them upside down. 
So in the, the parallel thirds on line 24C, you have F sharp on the bottom and A is on the top. So you have the, the root is on the bottom, the third is on the top. Well, what happens if you put the third on the bottom and the root on the top? Well, you have an interval of a six. It's a little wider interval. So here's the A on the bottom, and here's the F sharp on the top. And you play the scale. Harmonize below and six. So line 24D says harmonize below and six. That means that you're taking the, the root note in the right hand, and then you're harmonizing it with that note. On the other hand, 24C, doing it in thirds, you're, you're flipping them around. You're, you're playing the root on the bottom and the harmonized note on the top. This is really important. Uh, too many piano students neglect this, and too many piano teachers don't teach this. But it's very important. Playing sixths and tenths for your scales is very important because it teaches you how to harmonize chords and harmonize melodic lines. And in doing that, that will this will automatically improve your sight reading skills dramatically if you know all your scales in thirds and sixths. And then the fifth way is in tenths. So if we take a third, if we take a third, like in line 24C, and we expand that to be a third plus an octave, if we simply put the root note down an octave, we have F sharp here, and we have an A here. So I call this harmonizing above in tenths. So you have the root note here, and then you have an interval of a tenth. You have an octave, which is eight. Eight, nine, ten. So that's a tenth. A tenth is like a third plus an octave. So playing this, <clears throat> sounds like that. It's a little more open sound. There's more distance between the notes. And it's basically the same thing as thirds, but you're doing it with an added octave. I call these the five most important ways of practicing your scales. Parallel motion, contrary motion, in thirds, in sixths, a little um, more distance apart, and then in tenths, still more distance apart. Parallel, contrary, thirds, sixths, tenths. You don't need to do thirds, sixths, and tenths in contrary motion. You can just keep those parallel motion. It's not wouldn't do any good to do those in contrary. I mean, it, it might do some good, but uh, there's too many possibilities we could make. These are the most basic and the most important of all the ways, the possible ways you can play scales. And if you neglect any of these, then you are... Uh, actually not learning all the music theory that you should be learning. So one of the great things about following this system is that uh, students will learn music theory uh, much better than if they just take a music theory book and try to learn music theory. Because really this is, this is the foundation of music theory right here is major and minor scales. Major and minor scales form the foundation of chords. So all chords come from scales. And of course, all compositions have either chords or scales or partial scales in them. So the learning of scales is an absolute necessity for all piano students. And I know that uh, some piano teachers have had problems teaching scales because they don't know what to do first, what to do next. It's, it's, a, it's daunting and confusing because there are so many of them and it's not easy to make sense of everything. Uh, some teachers have teach B major first, as Chopin is said to have done. Other teachers teach it through the circle of fifths, which is the way that this presents it. 
And there's really lots of different ways of teaching scales, but the way that I teach here in the uh, well-rounded pianist piano method is, is a very straightforward and down-to-earth approach of learning scales that all teachers and students will find beneficial. So just a list of the things that, that uh, students will learn when they finish this book with all four grades is they'll learn the fingerings for all the major and minor scales. Uh, that, that includes harmonic and melodic, as well as natural. Uh, metronome. I use the metronome a lot in the weekly lesson plans. So the, not a week goes by that the student isn't practicing a little bit with a metronome, slowly with a metronome to make sure you, you can play with a metronome. So the, the, uh, the reason for using a metronome is not to necessarily to make the scales faster, it's to make them more even and to teach the student how to play with a steady beat. And then uh, metronomes, all key signatures will be learned up to six flat, uh, five sharps and six flats in this volume one. So volume one only goes up to five sharps and six flats. That's all you need for the 12 major and minor scales. And they will memorize those. So by the end of the 12 weeks or how many weeks it takes a student to go through this book, the student, if, if followed correctly, if the weekly lesson plans are followed correctly, all students will have all of the key signatures memorized up to five sharps and six flats. That's a really good thing because if you're a piano teacher, <laughs> how many times have you had students who have played for five, maybe even 10 years and they know maybe a couple key signatures, or maybe they can play their scale in C and G or something, but not in any of the black keys. Uh, this is kind of a scary thing, <laughs> playing for all those years and not knowing your key signatures. So this teaches your key signatures, and it teaches it in a very easy and organic fashion. You don't even learn the circle of fifths. There's no circle and there's no circle of fifths. You learn, that, learn them without the circle of fifths. The circle of fifths comes later, not earlier. So you learn the, the sharps and flats in their, their correct order. Then later on, you can apply the circle of fifths in a more theoretical fashion. And then last but not least, this book as well as volumes two and three have have weekly lesson plans. And that's the great thing about it because how many scale books do you know that have actual explanations on what to do first, what to do next, and what to do next? This is, I think, a first in uh, the line of books that I'm calling the Well-Rounded Pianist Piano Method in which I instruct students and teachers on the basic essentials the basic technical and musical and theoretical essentials for being a complete pianist. So that sort of sums up here the Complete Guide to Major and Minor Scales, Volume 1. Scales are very important. They should not be neglected. All students should practice scales and all teachers should teach scales. And if you would like to uh, dive into this, this very fun and uh, productive method here. Simply follow the links below this video and go to the Well-Rounded Pianist and go to the Well-Rounded Pianist Piano Method. Click on that and then click on whatever book you happen to be using and follow along with the weekly lesson plans. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you over at the Well-Rounded Pianist.